What's going on guys? We are back here at the shop. We got all the maintenance done to the B8S4 and now we're gonna move on to some motor stuff. So we're gonna get these old motor mounts there. They've been used, they're about seven, eight years old now. And we're gonna be getting those out, putting in the brand new 034 upgraded motor mounts. They look the same, but on the inside, they're quite different. And we have our good friend here, Kevin, who's gonna explain that to you guys today. So normally the factory mounts, they have a bunch of voids inside of them and they're fluid filled. So you get a bunch of motion from that. 034 has gone ahead and filled all those voids with a 65A durometer rubber. Uh, so we're gonna increase our stiffness, help with our throttle response, help get power to the ground better and remove that failure mode essentially. So pretty involved job. We have a lot of bolts out, a lot of torque to yield stuff out. You have to lift the motor, finagle these out the bottom, uh, but it's a pretty good maintenance item to do and it's gonna help improve the feel of the car. Cool. Yeah, you're so knowledgeable, Kevin. It's like, how does he know so much? All the information, he's got it stored up there. All right, guys, we're gonna head this over to Matt. He's gonna do all of our dirty work. We're gonna sit behind, watch, maybe have a lemonade or something, and we'll get that to you in the meantime. I support the engine from above. Um, normally, if you're doing this, you might have to remove this oil cooler uh, or oil heater, or whatever you wanna call it to get to the two lower support bolts for the engine mount. Um, but what I do is when I support it, I support it in two points and then I just lift the engine up high enough to clear the bolts so I don't have to undo the oiling system. Just it makes it cleaner and easier, but you need like a nice support bar with dual points. Um, on most cars, engine mounts are just, the engine sits on top of a mount. Uh, and then it sits in the subframe or the frame or whatever. This car is a little weird. Um, the engine mount actually bolts to the engine uh, perpendicular instead of parallel, if that's the right way to put it. The bolt runs into the side instead of the top. And then it bolts to this subframe cross member assembly only, and then that bolts to the car. So the whole thing bolts from the side instead of from the bottom, which is kind of weird. So this car is a little goofy. And then the transmission on this one, instead of having two mounts, like on BMWs, they have two separate transmission mounts, has one large mount that it sits on, and then this assembly bolts to the frame or the unibody. I do have a slight concern because this car being an automatic has some lines that run through here that are manual car doesn't have and I hope this isn't going to be a bigger deal than it should be. These are these are more like just support bolts for the mount really. Um, the main engine mount bolts run in the side here and here and it gets sandwiched between this metal this steel plate right here. The actual engine mount is in the middle and then this steel plate has captive nuts and it sandwiches it between the steel plate and the cross member. And then these are just supports for the lower section of this. That's why it's kind of funky. So that's the sandwich plate I was talking about. It just kind of fits up like that. And then the bolts run through the subframe. So a little bit funky. Then the engine actually sits in this groove and then bolts through from the same direction. All right. That was definitely a little bit harder with those lines in the way.
put this subframe bolt back in because you can't get the engine mount bolt out with this in. I'm gonna have to take that off anyway because we're gonna put another sway bar on it, but. All right, that's it. All right, so now that we have the motor mounts in, it's time to start on the fun stuff. Uh, Matt has gone ahead and graciously taken off the front bumper for us so we can see the factory heat exchanger. Uh, so on the V8S4 system here, we have a electric pump on the side that's gonna pump liquid through the heat exchanger up into the supercharger. And there's intercoolers in there that are between the supercharger veins themselves and the intake manifold. So the air that's coming in is passing through those. And once you start running bigger pulleys, more boost, intake air temperatures go way up. And especially when you're doing back-to-back -back pulls, we're gonna be throwing big pulleys on this thing, a big crank pulley and a small supercharger pulley. So we want our IATs to stay down. Uh, the 034 Motorsport unit is a dual pass unit. So we have flow coming in the bottom, across again, and then out back up into the supercharger. Uh, so this is gonna keep us nice and cool and keep our engine from pulling timing. Slow motion. Get on camera. Just get on camera. I'm already done. Yep. How's that look? Centered. Ish. All right, so we got the stock crank pulley off. It has two drives, one for the accessories, one for the supercharger. So as you can see the difference here, uh, we're going much bigger on the crank pulley for the supercharger drive. It's kind of like a bicycle, the front gear on a mountain bike. You want the bigger gear up front to spin it faster. Um, we're gonna be pairing that with the supercharger pulley up top, which we want smaller. So that also spins it faster. Uh, right now we are cooking that in the oven. It's a interference fit, so you have to heat up the inner bore so it can slide on the shaft and get a nice solid fit so it doesn't slip. All right, so the pulley's done. It's been in the toaster oven for 45 minutes-ish. Um, we've been pretty much baking it at its max capacity. So we're gonna go straight from the oven onto the supercharger shaft. So we heat it up because this is an interference fit. So normally the pulley won't go onto the supercharger snout, uh, the diameter is just too small. So factory is the same same type of fit. That's why you have to pull it or take it off. It's an interference press fit. So by heating it up, we're expanding the inner bore and allowing it to just have enough clearance to slide on there. And once it cools down, it's gonna be super tight and not wanna go anywhere. Mm -hmm. 